This episode of Fragbox TV is brought to you by the world's most beautiful nano reef tanks. Start your reefing adventure at reefcasa.com. What is going on, my reefing fam? March here. This is TV Fragbox, Fragbox TV, whatever you want to call it. It's our store here in Toronto that uh, follows this saltwater tanks, saltwater coral, saltwater fish, everything salty, salty water. No fresh water, sorry if you guys keep fresh water. We actually, we do have fresh water in the store. I lied, let me show you. It's, uh, it's right over here. There you go. And we also have some in the toilet. But other than that, this is a very salty, salty store. Okay, we're gonna do one of the glue down videos. I apologize in advance if I sound a little bit less enthusiastic or energetic as usual. Wow, that was a really nice shot as it just came out through the rocks there. Beautiful fish. Uh, I just came back from England, from the UK. Actually, I got a lesson. There's about people that are English, British, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Ireland, the United Kingdom, Brit like I didn't understand any of this. Maybe I'm ignorant, but uh, it's very complicated, these little islands over there. But anyways, we love you guys. It was nice meeting you and uh, I'm back. So what is going on with this tank here? If you've seen some of the other videos that I've done, I call these the glue down videos. So I don't like stuff on the sand bed. Um, it's just a personal preference. Um, I don't like the way it looks. And then also if we see anything on the sand bed, it kind of tells me or tells the staff that something has fallen over. This was a piece that came from Kavina. Maybe you guys know Kavina that works here. So if anyone wants a large leather coral for 20 bucks, come pick it up. Also, this was a, a piece from Kavina's tank, this large Colt coral. She's just making some room. And for some reason, my beautiful display tank has become her holding studio in the meantime. Okay, so what are we gonna glue down? What have I added that's new? The A-cans, if you saw in the last video, this one was kind of upset from the position there. I'll just give you a quick update and then we'll get into the coral placement sort of side of the video. They're looking really good again. I cleaned off some of this, see right there, that sponge, purple leaf kind of sponge. I love that stuff, but I think that it is sort of annoying the A-cans a little bit. If you're looking for A-cans, we actually have some arriving Thursday. So check out this tank over here, one of our large, what we call our colony tanks. It's basically empty because this is, uh, this is how we bring in a shipment. We empty everything in the tank. Thank you, Mr. Amazon. And then we can bring in more corals once it's all sold. So whenever you see the tank looking sort of like this, like really, really low in corals, it means usually that a new shipment is up and coming. So this will be packed with some beautiful Australian corals, acans, elegance, acanthophilias, open brames, maybe even some Christmas tree worm rocks, Ganiopora, Alveopora. Speaking about Ganis and Alves, let me show you some of the new ones that I'm gonna be placing in the tank today. This one right here, I don't know why, it just speaks to me. You know what, it's been here in the store for a long time. I'm always surprised when people don't buy things like this. I think it is so freaking nice and I've started to build out this Ghani Opora, Alvi Opora little garden rock over here. Maybe you guys saw in the last video because I'm basically out of space on the main structure of rock there. So what I've done is set up just kind of like a little new one. Right over here we have next to our nice red Ghani with kind of blue glittery tips. He's just doing really well. This, sort of, this seems to be sort of the sweet spot. I have this, uh-oh, what are we looking at? Red cyano. But it's just this one spot and it's just a little bit and I suspect it's because the nitrates and phosphates are quite elevated in this tank. We're running around 50 parts per million on nitrates, um, 0.1, maybe even a little bit higher on phosphates. So they're a little bit elevated, but everything looks good. But in that one spot of the tank, we get very little flow just because of the way that it's designed on our custom built 90 gallon tank here. It's four feet across. It's almost 30 inches this way. So it just, just happens that that tends to be a low flow area and that's where normally we're gonna find these sorts of algae. So one little spot, I'm not gonna go and treat it with ChemiClean. I'm not gonna go and make big changes, overall changes to water chemistry to try and treat one little area. Now, if it was all over the tank, if I'm seeing it on the sand bed, if I'm seeing it on the rock covering corals, then we're gonna go ahead and take some action. Why do I have a Nero 5 pump here on the floor? Because it uh, keeps flashing red on its little controller. If you guys have ever seen one of these, they're great pumps. I love them, we use them all over the shop. Um, this is flashing red and sometimes you get lucky and if you just clean them, so I put this thing through an acid bath, if you just clean them, you get lucky and they will start running again. Guys, if you're watching uh, this teal, you may wanna consider one day maybe doing a black one. I like it personally because look at the stand. It's kind of like AI inspired stand with this teal 
this color, but I know a lot of people don't like that color on the pump. So we're gonna hook that back up in a second. Oh, actually, now that I see it, look, a little bit of red slime right there as well. Overall, tank's doing really well. I'm starting to run into some warfare issues over here. Look at that. We have our blue hammer. Oh, can you focus, camera? Against Birds of Paradise. Who's gonna win that battle, kids? If you said hammer, you are one billion times correct. There's no chance a bird's nest is going to be able to defend themselves. So, uh, yeah, I should move it, but in today's video, I'm just going to get into gluing and then uh, maybe we'll do another trimming video because I see another issue over here. Look right there. You see that green on the right hand of your screen? If you're driving, don't look. Just drive and listen to the sound of my voice. We have our green uh, Kenya tree coral or Nephthia coral and it's combating with this Acropora. They really shouldn't be touching. But this is what happens naturally over time if stuff does well in your tank they are going to touch. Now, sometimes it's okay, like over here, our hammer garden. It's really no issue having hammer touching hammer. Holy jabezus. I'm trying not to swear, but this thing is, um, it's ready for fragging. I didn't really realize how big it is. Look at that. It's a large portion of the tank. Okay, so we're gonna add this alveopora, and then this over here, this hologram hammer. And it may look like it's just a purple green hammer, to the untrained eye, let me see if I can show you the difference in one of our frag beds. It's gotten more iridescence. Is that the word I want to use? Check this out. So this is our sort of what we call our classic hammer. This purple and green one here. This has been around in the trade forever. Green and then purple. But the hologram right over here, let me just pan over to it. I don't know what it is. Maybe it just looks more contrast, the saturation more holographic it's just a cool piece and i want to see if i can uh, actually grow it out this is one that we get in from the wild and i've never taken the time or bothered to actually cultivate it so i'm going to give that one a shot i really haven't decided where it's going to go and then two more gorgonians why because i don't know i just absolutely love these and they just add so much height to the tank and make it look so natural looking i think everyone should keep gorgs they're really easy they're easy to frag they're easy to keep they like uh, lots of flow they like lots of light, and uh, yeah, they're gonna make really, really nice additions as soon as we get Kavina's big leather out of here. If someone's got a big tank and you want a hell of a deal, that one's for you. I wanna show you one more thing before we glue. Let's look at this toadstool. Every time we do this video, he just continues to stretch for light. So I'm focusing on the stock right now. Da, 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 da. Look at this. And he's just growing, growing, growing all the way up. Look how he's just created this sort of snaking body pattern through the Duncan, through the Acro, through the Ganipora, through the leather, right from the base, and it's extending about six inches. And what that tells me is that he wants, or she wants, or it wants more light. It wasn't happy on this spot, and it's reaching. It's trying to get through the canopy of corals almost as if it was a tree in a jungle. These things are uh, not far off, actually. You know what? In many ways, it's just instead of being in a forest, they are underwater. One more issue, I think, maybe with some, we're about to see some warfare right here. I say warfare, but it's like super slow, and then they touch, and then it's very dramatic, and then one of them is usually gonna lose, but this rainbow loom on the left against Miyagi Tort, I'm actually a little bit curious, mm, it's a little morbid to say, which coral will win, and I have to find, I have to do something with this fox coral. Having it just sit here like that on the sand, I'm doing it no justice, I'm not giving it any love. Uh, it's really just, it's, it's against my my feng shui, my bonsai style of garden. This is not bonsai. I don't know what's going on with my Kenya tree, actually, now that I look at it. See, it's good to do these videos because sometimes, you know, we're so busy in the shop. I got so much going on and uh, I kind of gloss over and don't really pay attention as well as I could until issues arise. Kenya tree, basically immortal coral and really should not be flopped over like that. So is this pump on? Hmm. You know what? It could be the lack of flow. That could be the issue. My Anthelia from hell has made a comeback. If you guys have seen in the other videos, I'll scrape this down to basically nothing. And then somehow it just comes on back. Okay, let me use a tripod. And then what I like to do is grab the glue, get my hands wet, and sort of walk you through the process and what I'm thinking and why I'm gluing something where I'm gluing. And then kind of give you a little bit of coral information and as I go. So let me grab a bottle of glue. I'm gonna go with preferred brand of glue, which is the DRS, uh, DRS Super Glue Gel Extra Thick. And uh, just remember, we are not sponsored by anyone on this channel. So if I say anything, if I say I like a product, it's because 
I like it. And I like it a lot. Okay, I guess I'm gonna start by removing Janina's big old leather. Again, if anybody wants it, come pick it up. Things bigger than my hand, it's gotta be about eight inches across. We'd make a lovely addition to a large aquarium and uh, it's just 20 bucks. So not a lot of things you can get these days for 20 bucks with the inflation. I don't know where you're watching from, but we've definitely been hit with some serious inflation here in Toronto. If you guys didn't know, that's where we are in the north and it's actually beautiful outside today. Okay, what am I going to do about this cyan? Let's start with that. Step one, what's the best way to get rid of a little bit of cyan that's sticking on the rocks? I'm just going to run and grab a turkey baster. If I can find one. And because it's just a little bit, I'm just going to lightly baste it off. And that's it. I'll let the current do its job. You know what? I really could just suck it out since I have this device. I'll take it out of the tank. But I suspect it's probably going to come back in that same spot because I'm not doing anything to stop it from growing. I'm just removing it from the rock. But yeah, chances are it will just pop up. And it's just uh, something you live with. It's not really the end of the world. So that piece, that helmet for it, I believe it is on a plug. So if you ever get Craig's rust or anywhere really, and you want to remove stuff from the plug, it's not hard. Um, you just trim the bottom here so we have a special, uh, not even special, just like a little sort of call them coral cutters or they're like bone cutters. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You want to pass them to me, Fabio? Pair of bone cutters. They don't have to be new. You can give me the used ones in the drawer. They're not up here big ones. Okay. Well, let's try to keep this one clean. Fresh. To the side. Fresh, fresh. Check it out. Oh, that feels so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn. So we do sell these if you're looking for them. Briefcasa.com. If you're international, fragbox.ca. If you're in Canada, look how easy that is. Well, that's it. And now, with my base, it is really easy to glue it down. So I like to give it, mm, let me see if I can show you on camera how much glue I'm using here. Just about, I can say, I usually say like a teardrop, but I'm gonna go a little heavier on this one. I'm gonna go about double that. And that's it. We're gonna take it and stick it exactly where we want it. So I've kind of felt before this spot here feels good. I wanna give a little bit of space for the red one. They can touch. But they don't need to touch, so there's really no reason for them to touch. I'm not, like, it's not like zoanthids where it looks very cool sometimes if you let them grow in between one another and you purposefully allow them to sort of intermingle. You can end up with a really cool zoanthid garden where you'll catch different heads and different colors literally like in between one another, but that's not going to happen here with the albies. Okay, this hammer is a little bit daunting. Where am I going to stick it? You know what? I might be better fragging this thing. It's asking to be fragged, and then it'll kind of give me some room over on this side of the tank. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Fabio, you're in a fragging mood? Yeah. Fraggy, fraggy? Okay. Let's frag it. Yeah. Check out the size of this thing. This is pretty cool because this was grown from only one head, and this is going to be the second time we've done a, a fragging of it. Look at the size of this. It's actually getting so large that over here on this side, it's getting so big, it's kind of starting to kill itself. So, yeah, I think this is it. It's time to frag it. It's kind of cool. It's half purple, half green. We call this like a splatter or spray paint hammer. And there's a lot, a lot of heads on here, and it's just completely open with canopy. So if you want to grab the downstairs one of those white bins, and we'll toss it in. Check out the size. Massive. It's got to be about 10... Maybe it's even 12 inches across. And it's so cool that it started as just one. One little itty bitty head and we've opened up so much room on that side of the tank now. As we wait for Fabio, this entire section over here. So look, it was right here. This was the size of it. And then boom, we have real estate now for so much more coral. Okay, bam, look at that. What a big difference with that hammer fragged up. So we've managed to save uh, this one here. It's got about five, six heads, and we're going to see how long it takes for that hammer to grow out again. I'm going to use a different product this time. I tried this a couple weeks ago on another tank we have here in the store, and this is the Tunzi Coral Gum Instant, and I didn't really understand why it was different or 
why they say instant, but it is very different than any of the other epoxies that are on the market. So what you do is unscrew this and take a little bit. I really like this stuff. If you're gonna glue, or rather epoxy some bigger pieces, this is quite useful. And this is probably gonna be my go to epoxy. I'm actually gonna go visit these guys. Tunes, what's up, in Germany, um, early May. They, uh, they don't sponsor us, so they're not telling me to say any of this. You basically just knead it together, so it's kind of like a, a putty, right? And it comes half uh, purple and half white, and you just sort of knead it together until you get a consistent color. Now, with epoxies I've used in the past, usually what I'll do is use some epoxy as well as glue. I find that the glue gives you sort of that instant hold, and the epoxy will give you that long-term hold. But after using this on another tank, um, It'll hold in about five minutes. So sometimes I'll still go ahead and use the glue with epoxy. So I'm gonna use it here on this hammer coral. And I kind of like where it was in that same spot. I have a crevice in the rock that fits nicely. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick the epoxy. Or you know what? I'm gonna do what I know that works. I'm gonna do the same sort of technique where I go glue first. So on the base of the coral, I'm gonna glue it. And then I put the, let me show you on camera what I'm doing. So there's the glue. There's the epoxy. So those two are kind of good like bind together. And why I like this one over the other epoxies, it's really soft. The other ones are kind of rock hard. And what I do is put them in a microwave to warm them up. So that's my sort of sandwich that generally works on just about all heavy corals. So I go glue, glue, epoxy, glue. And I'm just gonna quickly put it exactly where I want it. The glue is gonna set basically right away. And then the epoxy is gonna set in the next 10 minutes, but fully cure within, uh, I think it says within a day or something. I should have read the instructions better, but it's gonna be cool to learn more about that company when we go there. I'm actually gonna make a Tunzi Osmolator 3 with them, so that should be cool. They've been around forever, and they make, in my opinion, the best auto top off ATO on the market. I think I like this hammer right over here. I know that this green one grows really quick, so I wanna give him a little bit of space to sort of do his thing before he gets clobbered i'm thinking right there so when i'm finding a spot to glue i'm also trying to find somewhere in the rock that kind of fits naturally so i'm trying to see how it's going to lock in sometimes you get lucky and it's like putting two pieces of a puzzle together where it's almost as if it was just meant to go there the skeleton naturally the contour of it just fits so nicely with the rock so that's what i found here in this one spot and i'm going to stick it and if it's good I know what I'm doing, obviously not because it's falling. Sometimes if it's not sticking, what I do is I, I say shimmy. I just kind of like try and break up the glue by moving it around as you see what I'm doing here. Let's see. Hmm, this is kind of embarrassing, but I like showing you guys. I'm not perfect. I know it looks like it. But I'm not. I'm far from it. And I am doing a really shit job today in this one. And I'm trying not to push too hard because the um, you can damage the hammer coral by pushing too hard on the, the tissue, on the polyps. If you lose a couple, it's normal. They, you know, even when we're bagging or handling them, sometimes we'll lose a couple of polyps, that's fine. But if you push too hard, you can even crush the skeleton entirely. For this photosynthetic Gorgonian, I'm thinking somewhere, let me turn the camera. I'm thinking right over here. I kind of have an empty spot. And I like putting stuff with height lower down. Um, I think it just looks cool. You know, we expect to see them here at the top of the reef, but it just adds some cool vertical height to the, the rockscape. So I think I'm gonna stick it. I like it right there. And if it shades out the mushrooms over here, they're not really gonna mind because they're mushrooms and they don't need a lot of light. These have grown pr quite well, actually. They started off as one and I'm up to three. This came as a trade-in from my friend. Uh, what up, Zach, if you're watching, he's local. So from that one mushroom, one, I got three of them now. I'm really happy with that placement. I What I did off camera, you wouldn't have seen, but I just took this downstairs. And with my bandsaw, I quickly cut so that I have a nice flat surface. So this is a really easy one. I'm just gonna do glue. Um, I use epoxy when something is heavy or awkward in shape. I'm trying to get like a drastic kind of angle to the coral. I and mean, if I want to overhang or a ledge, that's what I'll do. Sort of that epoxy, glue epoxy, like the sandwich, the March sandwich I just showed you. This is a super straightforward one. And I don't want them to bother this um, forest fire, so I'm just trying to position the uh, tentacles sort of away. This guy, when I came back from England the other day, was falling over, so I, I can't expect the staff to know where every single coral in the store goes. Um, 
have it on this frag, what we call frag savers here. You can buy these on their site. They're so useful. So check it out. It's just got a hole in the middle designed to hold a frag plug and it makes it super mobile. Like if you want to take it out exactly how I just did, you can easily move the pole. What I'm going to do right now though is I don't want this to move anymore. So I'm going to glue this in that spot because this forest fire, it's just every time I'm looking at it, it's getting bumped around, it's getting moved. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the frag saver. They start out as a white ceramic, but look, after it gets covered with coralline, it's got the, the, or the pinks and the reds. You can't really see it. It blends really nicely into the rock. And now I've just basically made a pedestal for this forest fire digi. And that's it. It's not going to move unless I want to take it out of here. If it gets too big and I want to frag it, these are really, really useful. I think they're 10 bucks on our site. Here's another one that the same thing keeps happening to. So I'm just going to show you one more time what I'm doing. This is our frag saver right here. And this is the actual coral. Frag saver, coral, frag saver, pretty simple. So what I'm going to do again is just glue this. So I'm, I'm creating a, a spot, a pedestal. So let's say I wanted to change out that acro if it grows too much. And um, I'm using a, a pretty generous amount of glue on the back of here, more than the teardrop, I usually say. So if the acro grows out too much, I can leave the pedestal in place and I can just swap out that acro. I can take it, frag it, move it, do whatever the heck I want with it, and then check it out. Now I'm confident that it's not going to move from that position. I got one more gorg, and I think we have kind of two on this side, but this side gets a lot of love because this is a side you, when you come in the store, ta-da, this is the side that you're seeing. It's greeting you from the front door. So I do give it a little bit more love than the other side, which really just faces a wall. I'm thinking maybe here. I... I already know this is a bad idea, but I kind of like it. Hmm. You know what? We can always move it. I'm going to go right there. It's just easy. It's flat. Or maybe down here. No, it's going to maybe get stung by it. Look, we have this nice purple trumpet coral that we added in the last video. I'm thinking here. I'm thinking that's a good spot because you know what's going to happen? I'm going to glue it. And as soon as I put something in this tank or I say something's not for sale, even though it's been for sale for a long time, um, that's when a customer wants it. Something about the you can't have it or you know, that's mine or I'm going to keep it. It makes customers horny for that piece. And um, it's like, oh, you know, it must be something special about it. If March is keeping it, then it must be worth it. But these pieces, a lot of the ones that are in here, I watch them for months. They're just here, they're chilling, they're doing their thing. And then I say, you know what? That is just getting nicer and nicer and I'm going to keep that one. And then whenever I do that, that's when somebody comes in and says, I would like that piece. But not anymore, usually once it goes in here. Okay, I'll make an exception. I would sell that Gorg. I just glued down. I think I want one more Ganipora. I don't know if the video has gone on too long, but if it has, too bad. We're still here. Thank you for watching. I think I'm going to do one more on this rock right here because I have this really nice purple and green uh, type of Gani. So I'm going to add that one. Actually, you know what? We got Ganis coming in from Australia this week, so I'm going to wait because that one, we have a lot of them. I think I'm just going to give it a little more time and see what comes in. Usually when we get a shipment in, I try my best to only pick one coral because we bring in three, 400, there's, there's a bunch that I want. So I gotta limit myself. Otherwise I'm gonna end up keeping everything we import and not selling anything. That tank really needs a cleaning. And the forest fire broke off the top. How the fudge that happened? Okay, anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. I appreciate you watching this and we'll see you guys back here on the next episode of Fragbox TV. Bye for now.